Laura Bennett, and I'm going to show you how to renew and reuse this entry plate, which has already been printed. The first step is to remove the old ink using BioSalute and a rag or paper towels. Let the BioSalute sit on the plate for a few minutes before thoroughly rubbing it. I place the plate in a tray and spray it with water. I pour the cleaning agent Barkeeper's Friend on the plate and rub it in a circular motion with a rag for approximately four minutes to remove the old image. Once the ink is removed, I raise one end of the tray and rinse the plate by pouring water over it. Then I rub a clean paper towel over the plate. I squeegee the plate and spray it with water. Then I pour the cleaning agent Bon Ami on the plate. To that I add carborundum grit in numbers 100, 180, and 220. This mixture will give my plate a surface similar to that of a regular ball grain litho plate. However, the amount of grits can be adjusted to give you a finer or coarser drawing surface. Using a fine to medium sanding sponge, I rub the mixture in a circular motion over the plate for about five minutes. This method is much faster and easier than using a traditional levigator. Again, I raise the tray and rinse the plate with water. I rub a clean paper towel over the plate to make sure any remaining residue is removed from the surface. Now I take the plate to a sink and rinse it again with water. I squeegee the plate a final time and dry it with a hair dryer. The plate is now ready to accept my new drawing. First I make the key drawing for my image. Then I attach the drawing to the plate using register pins. I slide a red iron oxide transfer sheet face down between the plate and the drawing and begin tracing my image with a ballpoint pen. Since I want to combine both toner washes and hand drawing in my image, I must apply the washes first since heat is used to bond the wash to the plate. Following the recipe in the new book, Printmaking Revolution, I mix a reticulated toner wash and paint it on my plate. Since I like to draw intuitively into my washes, I don't worry about following the key drawing exactly as it looks. Once finished, I place the plate on a small wire rack set on top of the hot plate, which should be at a temperature of 207 degrees. To help retain the heat, I cover it with a tray. After about 12 minutes, I check to see if the toner has completely bonded to the plate. I do this by gently rubbing small areas of the image with a white piece of cotton. If the wash rubs off on the cotton, I give the plate a few more minutes. Now I add hand drawing to my plate, gradually building up tone using Stone's brand litho crayons. With century plates, it is easy to see where you are drawing because they are made of a light colored aluminum which makes for better contrast between the crayon and the plate. 
I put a piece of paper under my hand to keep the plate free from unwanted grease. I also use Sharpie paint pens to add dark outlines to certain areas on the plate. Now my drawing is finished. I talc the plate and rub it with cotton. With a sponge, I apply tannic plate etch. Then I buff the plate tightly with cheesecloth. I use a hair dryer to make sure it is completely dry. Next, I wash out the drawing material, material using BioSalute on a piece of cotton. Again, I let the BioSalute sit on the plate for a minute to begin dissolving the image. I buff it with a clean piece of cotton and then dry it again. Following the directions for making gum deletions in the book Printmaking Revolution, I mix food coloring with tannic plate etch and paint it on my borders to remove any unwanted drawing. Now I apply the BioLac by rubbing it into the surface with a piece of cotton. I quickly buff the image to a thin layer using cheesecloth. Then I use a hair dryer for about 5 minutes to set the BioLac. Now the plate is ready to print. I mark the press bed with masking tape so that way I know where to start and stop printing. I use DNS plastic register pins to protect the scraper bar. Then I tape the century plate to the press bed. I wet the image with water and begin rolling up my plate in a brown-black ink. Once the image is fully inked, I keep the plate damp and I clean the borders. I apply tannic again as a second etch. I lightly buff it with cheesecloth and then dry it with a hand fan. To print my edition, I sponge the plate and roll one pass of ink. I align my paper on the register pins and begin to print. This is my finished print made using a century plate. If you want to learn more about the book Printmaking Revolution and the techniques and materials in this video, go to the website cspographics.com.